Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Failsafe is a 1964 Cold War thriller film that was directed by Sidney Lumet, and it's based on a 1962 novel that bears the same name. The movie features performances by actors Henry Fonda, Dan O'Hurley, Walter Matthau, Frank Overton, Larry Hagman, Fritz Weaver, Dom DeLuise, and Sorrel Book. The storyline for the movie goes that when the United States Air Force's elaborate fail-safe systems fail, a squadron of nuclear-armed bombers crosses the Bering Strait into the USSR to attack. No one is quite sure what happened or why it happened, but it's left to the President of the United States to try and find a solution with his Soviet counterpart. For some, the situation presents opportunities, such as a political science professor, played by Walter Matthau. He argues that they should not dwell on the morality of the attack and simply accept that it just happened. On that basis, he argues in favor of an all-out nuclear attack against the Soviet Union as the only sure way to ensure the survival of American culture and beliefs. The president sees it differently and works with the Soviets to stop the American bombers before they reach their target. When that fails, the president sees only one possible way to prevent global thermonuclear war. I tell you, I watch a lot of movies and have watched a lot of movies, but this one is one that really sends chills across you. I found this movie very disturbing. One of the things that makes it so disturbing is it's shot in black and white, and it has a more dramatic theatrical style with very claustrophobic close-ups, sharp shadows, and pronounced silences between several characters. Except for the radio background, during a scene at an Air Force base in Alaska, there is no musical score for the film. There was a very short one that was put together for the trailer, but the director, Lamette, decided not to use any music in the film itself, and that really adds to the tension of it. With very few exceptions, the action takes place largely in the White House underground bunker the Pentagon War Conference Room, the Strategic Air Command War Room, and a single airplane bomber cockpit. Shots of normal daily life are seen only after the title opening credits and in the final scene depicting an ordinary New York City day. Its residents entirely unsuspecting of their imminent destruction each scene ending with a freeze frame shot at the moment of impact. The computer-generated image on the control room screen, including the map of the world, the planes, and the explosions, was entirely drawn and animated by hand. The large metal phone that the president uses to call the Soviet premier was actually a special phone that was used by explosive companies during blasting. The view of the satellite zooming into a closer shot is actually film taken from a camera mounted on a captured German V-2 rocket launched from White Sands, New Mexico. The film is run backwards to show the illusion of zooming closer to the ground. In the original novel, the character played by Walter Matthau has a backstory that's very similar to the early life of future Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, a German-Jewish immigrant who fled Nazi Germany with his parents as a teenager, then becoming an intelligence officer in the U.S. Army in charge of interrogating German POWs. He then went on to become a specialist in international relations. 
this was one of the last films in which Walter Matthau played a villain before rising to stardom with his comedic supporting performance in The Fortune Cookie from 1966. Prior to that, the New York-trained actor was mostly cast in parts that used his height and craggy-looking face as a source of menace. The filmmakers received no cooperation at all from the Pentagon or the U.S. Armed Forces, and the interior shots of the Pentagon and the Strategic Air Command Base were replicated on sound stages. Stock footage was used because the Air Force declined to cooperate in the production at all. They disliked the premise of the lack of control over nuclear strike forces. This movie and Dr. Strangelove were both produced in the period after the Cuban Missile Crisis, when people became much more sensitive to the threat of nuclear war. Failsafe so closely resembled the novel Red Alert, on which Dr. Strangelove is based, that the writers and the director Stanley Kubrick filed a copyright infringement lawsuit against this film. The case was settled out of court. The result of the settlement was that Columbia Pictures, which had financed and was distributing Dr. Strangelove, also bought Failsafe, which had been an independently financed production. And Stanley Kubrick also insisted that the studio release Dr. Strangelove first. Now, Nancy Berg plays a really interesting role at the beginning of this film. She plays a lady that is trying to entice Walter Matthau's character to no avail. Nancy was an American model, and she did very little acting work. But she did have a starring role and was the sole performer for a 1955 New York television program that was entitled Counting Sheep with Nancy Burke, which aired five nights a week from 1 o'clock to 1.05 in the morning. The nightgown-clad Miss Berg would appear on screen, get into bed, perform a bit of business, such as to read Romeo and Juliet or to eat grapes off a toy Ferris wheel, and then, in an extreme close-up, whisper good night to the camera and pretend to go to sleep as animated sheep jump over a fence. Believe it or not, this show was very popular, and nobody really knew exactly why, other than the fact that she created such an enticing presence at bedtime. Take a look at this movie. It's a good film, and it does just what it's supposed to do. It puts you on the edge of your seat. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.